This program is presented by University of California Television. Like what you learn? Visit our website or follow us on Facebook and Twitter to keep up with the latest UCTV programs. Welcome to sunny Southern <coughs> California, to the Inland Empire, as we call ourselves, and to the University of California, Riverside. Uh, today we are hosting the third in a series of UC Advance Paid Roundtables, which is a part of the NSF Advance Grant that the Office of the President received under the leadership of Susan Carlson. My name is Yolanda Moses, and I am one of the members of the steering committee. And it is my pleasure to, in addition to welcome you all here, to introduce our uh, provost, who will give you the official welcome for the university. Not yet, Alice. <laughs> Um, I wear two hats here. Uh, well, actually, I have three roles at the moment. Uh, Professor of Anthropology, Associate Vice Chancellor for Diversity, Excellence, and Equity, and I see some of my other partners in crime for, for that job in the UC here today. And um, as I said, a member of this steering committee. We also have our own NSF paid uh, grant here on campus and uh, the co-PIs for that grant are here in the room and you will meet them uh, later today. <clears throat> I wanted to say a little bit about Provost Rabenstein. I met him when I came here uh, back to the campus in 2003. What you all don't know about me is this is my alma mater. So I am back at the place I started in a way, um, helping to move the institution to the next level. Uh, Provost Rabinstein is someone who has also uh, been a champion for UC Riverside for a very long time. And he received his uh, BS degrees from the University of Washington. He received his PhD in chemistry from the University of Madison, Wisconsin. And he's taught at UC Riverside for a long time. Dallas, how many years now? 28 years. So he's seen this institution go through a lot of changes. Um, he's also had positions at McGill University in Canada as well as visiting position, position at Oxford University. But here at UC Riverside, he was a uh, department chair of chemistry, the dean of the graduate division for many years before coming, becoming our EDC and provost. He has been a staunch supporter of our campus UCR 2020 plan, which he helped develop, but has as one of his four cornerstones a institutional commitment to diversity that includes the diversification of our faculty and staff at the university. He has also been a champion in supporting our NSF paid grant in that we get funds to, for activities for STEM women in every activity that we do here on campus with the resources he's given us, opens it up to women, all women across the campus. And so we're very grateful to him for that. He has also, in his wisdom, seen fit for us to reintroduce our faculty success and diversity associate vice uh, chancellor position. And I'm sure you'll be meeting with Mary Govain today. Mary, where are you? Mary Govain, who, is a, who has just started that position. When, Mary? Uh, April, 1st. April 1st. And Mary also has the distinction of having been our uh, chair of our academic senate here at UCR. So um, for all of those reasons, um, I think it's more than fitting for uh, Dallas Rabenstein to welcome you to UCR. Well, thank you, uh, Yolanda, and good morning, everyone. Uh, 
As the executive vice chancellor and provost at uh, UC Riverside, it is my distinct honor to welcome all of you here today uh, to our campus. Uh, as Yolanda indicated, we've arranged for a beautiful day for you to be here. I hope that uh, sometime during the day you'll be able to get out of this room and uh, maybe walk around campus a bit. Uh, we have a beautiful campus and uh, for some of you it might be your first time here. And so I hope you will take the opportunity to uh, see a little more of our campus. Uh, it also is my pleasure and honor to welcome you here for the third University of California NSF Advance Roundtable on mentoring faculty in an inclusive environment, in, in an inclusive climate, supporting women and U URM faculty in the University of California. We're pleased to have all of you here today and we want to extend a special welcome to Regent uh, Fred Ruiz. Fred, maybe you could put up your hand. Okay. Regent uh, Ruiz has been an important and thoughtful voice on the Board of Regents on diversity issues as well uh, as, well as on many other uh, areas of university gov governance. Now, achieving a faculty, a diverse faculty in the STEM fields, uh, a diverse faculty that really is the face of California is a goal of each of our campuses. However, I think that our campuses, most of our campuses are finding this to be a challenge, particularly <clears throat> in the STEM fields. Uh, according to the NSF's latest data, women now receive 53% of the doctoral degrees in the biological sciences and 46% of the doctoral degrees in the agricultural sciences. That's very encouraging. Less encouraging are the proportion of women who are the new PhDs in the physical sciences, 32%, in mathematics and statistics, 30%, and then in the engineering fields, 23%. However, these NSF statistics reinforce that as university leaders, we must not simply wring our hands and lament the so-called pipeline problem. That is why it is so important that you are gathering here today to talk about mentoring programs and strategies. Mentoring and support systems are, are not just important for new faculty, but they're important for faculty that every, at every stage of their careers. And here at UC Riverside, promising and important work is being done with the grant that Yolanda mentioned, the Moving Forward for Women in STEM Fields and Beyond NSF Advanced Grant. This grant, as uh, Yolanda mentioned, is led by uh, professors Yolanda Moses, Cindy LaRive, Sharon Walker, and Dean Mary Lynn Yates. And this grant has a major mentoring component of it. And that is why my office is providing additional support uh, for this program. Now, the UC President's Task Force Report on Faculty Diversity emphasizes the importance of having underrepresented minorities and women in positions of academic leadership. Frankly, we have not done a uh, great, frankly, we have a great deal of work to do in this area, both at UCR and across the UC system. Uh, the Moving Forward Project has a significant leadership training component in it and also uh, Chancellor Connolly, uh, who could not be here today, she's at a workshop or a training workshop, safety training workshop in Oakland today. And I are committed to supporting the creation of sustainable activities intended to support the professional advancement of women and minority uh, leading to institutional change. Uh, in addition, I'd like to also mention, as Yolanda did, the appointment of uh, Professor Mary Govain, 
uh, and as Yolanda indicated, she was our recent uh, UCR Academic Senate Chair. Uh, Mary has just been appointed to the position of Associate Vice Provost for Faculty Success, Ac Equity, and Diversity. And Mary's appointment was just announced last week. Uh, but in the month, months and years to come, I know that she will be a vital force uh, promoting uh, faculty success, faculty diversity, faculty equity uh, on our campus and in helping UCR achieve a very diverse uh, faculty as well as promoting diversity in university uh, leadership. Well, today's roundtable will allow all of us to learn from each other about how to use the research and best practices from the literature and from our own experiences with promising practices across the University of California. The networks that we build will facilitate better outcomes for us all. So once again, welcome to UCR, and I hope you have a very productive day. Thank you. A welcome for me as well. Um, I'm Susan Carlson, uh, Vice Provost for Academic Personnel at Office of the President. I wanted to add, I don't want to repeat what you've heard from Dallas and Yolanda, but add to uh, a couple of things they said. Uh, this three-year grant is supported by the NSF, but it's also been supported by uh, people, time, energy, and funding at Office of the President and all 10 campuses. So it's really been a, a, a system-wide effort. Meeting the California Challenge is the kind of nickname we've given to our program. The goal of this program, as you've heard, is to bring university STEM faculty into closer alignment with the diverse population of California and to lead national progress in such efforts among research universities. With over 3,700 STEM faculty, UC has constant opportunities to attract the accomplished faculty who will drive innovation in the 21st century. Uh, as you've heard, this is the third of five roundtables, and the goals of these day-long events are to create research-based and data-driven events for the UC academic community so that decision makers on faculty recruitment and retention can share successes and challenges and affect change on their campuses. So a little bit about our goals for the day. Our topic, as you've heard, is mentoring multivariate mentoring that supports, in particular, our female and underrepresented minority faculty in STEM disciplines. The reading materials and the bibliography in your electronic portfolio give you some sense of the growing body of scholarship on the topic. And our presenters are among the authors who are featured there. I also wanted to mention the research of Naomi and Mark Chesler, who describe the classic model of success in the STEM fields as the heroic journey, a journey in which a mentor challenges the protege to increase his or her tolerance to stress and to seek, seek abandonment from former helpers on the road to independence. Their research, not surprisingly, also shows that this boot camp mentality in which one success comes only with the failure of others is at odds with the principles, needs, and working modes of women and underrepresented minorities. They review alternatives like distributed mentorship, mentoring teams, and peer mentoring. And we'll hear, hear more about these uh, other ways of mentoring in the course of the day. So first two goals you've got up here, to understand the particular mentoring needs of women and underrepresented minority faculty in STEM, to learn about a mosaic of mentoring models fitted to various career stages in STEM fields, and to provide UC campuses relevant research and models to build effective mentoring programs. What we don't say here, but I think it's important to, to mention, is that I don't think we have enough mentoring programs. So I'm, I'm hoping that one of the outcomes of today will be to allow us to build more of them for our faculty. And then goals three and four, to share successes and to identify gaps in current UC mentoring efforts. And fourth, to establish mentoring as a tool for dealing with retention and climate issues in STEM departments, clarifying 
that effective mentoring benefits senior as well as junior faculty. And I just wanted to underline this last comment, that mentoring is really not about helping faculty who are somehow less capable, but about building a better community in which we can all do our best work. Um, also, I hope you noticed in your electronic portfolio some data charts, which were really meant to get you thinking about the issues of early and mid-career faculty on a system-wide basis. So all of these charts um, have to do with STEM faculty at UC system-wide, and thanks to Matt Xavier for developing these slides for us. We, we're not going to talk about them now, this, so this is kind of just to get your uh, juices flowing. Um, the first three charts provide data on our successes and challenges in retaining assistant professors, and the last two on the advancement for associate professors. While most of the gender and racial differences you'll see on these slides are not statistically significant, the constant is that men are doing better than women in each case, although often just slightly. Um, and this first chart, for example, shows that men reach tenure earlier than women do. Uh, this second chart on resignations among assistant professors shows that by the fifth year, we lose a higher percentage of women than men. 8.2% of the women assistant faculty in STEM and 6.5% of the men assistant faculty. Uh, and this chart shows resignations by race and ethnicity. It, it's, it's a little more complicated to, to interpret here. Um, and what you see is the highest rate of loss is among majority whites. But if you look at the bottom line in red, I think there's some good news here, which is that we lose very few of our underrepresented minority STEM faculty during the assistant professor years. And in this cohort, only one of 29 left the university. On to chart four. So finally, in these last two slides, we turn to the issues of retention and mentoring for our associate faculty, associate professor faculty in STEM, which is the topic of the second afternoon session. Again, among STEM faculty, you see men reaching full professor more quickly than women. And on the final slide, chart five, what you see is that underrepresented minority STEM faculty advance more slowly than white and Asian faculty. This difference is statistically significant and I think should give us pause. And finally, uh, before we move on to the keynote speaker, I'd just like to uh, uh, do my job and thank the people who put the event together today. Um, and uh, these are big thanks that go out. First, to the planning committee. From UC River Riverside, Yolanda Moses, Wendy Ashmore, <laughs> Leah Haimo, Brad Hyman, Sharon Walker, and Felicia Garrett. Mark Golden, the project evaluator from UC Berkeley, and from Office of the President, Nancy Tanaka, Matt Xavier, Janet Lockwood, Jennifer Lipscomb, Sharon Thomas, Joe Augustin, Gina Duran, Carolyn Minnie, Christy Farron, and Linda Peterson. It took everybody in the office. 